Our Washington local stations matter by texting RADIO to 52886. Furnished by NAB in this station, message and data rates may apply. And good morning. Welcome to the Out and About Show. Focus on Stafford County today here on 1590 KVGB. I'm Steve Webster, your host. Welcome in to the show. Once again, we're going to talk about all the great things happening in Stafford County. Joining us on the show today, Stafford County Economic Development Director, Carolyn Dunn, along with Eco Stafford Eco Devo Program Director, Ashley Bevan, who have come up here. Did you get any rain to the south today? I mean, he, he did. We so did. I don't know what the measure of it is. Okay, but, okay, but it's it's raining down it's there. It's been consistently raining through the morning, even a little bit through the night. So. Well, Fred Seifer was in Seward, and he was bemoaning the fact that everyone north of Great Bend got rain last night, and he did. Not that he wasn't rooting for those people. But we, you know, it's actually, all about I... making Fred happy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I... so there's your rain report today. It rained south of Great Bend. It did. We drove in rain to get here this just now, so okay. it's... Right, it's accumulating. Good. We'll take all we can get. Absolutely, at this time of year. Carolyn Dunn and Ashley Bevan with us today. I had a chance to talk with a woman from St. John yesterday. Her name was Mary Haddikin, who is really kind of spearheaded the effort to get uh, the Kansas Department of Transportation to come to St. John. And she was just hoping maybe to get a meeting together and maybe one person. Heck, KDOT's sending four people down next week yeah. to this meeting. It's going to take place at the uh, library at uh, 7 o'clock on the 28th. That's next Wednesday. Concerning the intersection of US 281 and Highway 50. I don't know what it is about that intersection. I've, I've crossed it for years. And it's like you look left, you look right, you look left. You, and you never feel comfortable going across that intersection. And... I guess a lot of people wonder Couldn't why, but this more. is, this going to be an interesting meeting next Wednesday, Carolyn. It is, you know, you're exactly right. It is a, one of those unsettling intersections. I don't know if it's because we live here and we know how many bad accidents there have been over the years, but even my, my kids, I was thinking about this driving up here, my kids that are now seven, 10 and 12, they know how, how bad it is. And they will kind of encourage me, mom, make sure you look when we go into that intersection. So it is commonly known, I think how, um, just how bad it's been. Um, and I think that this kind of meeting that Mary has organized is exactly the kind of democratic approach we need to, to, to highlight to KDOT what the problem is. Here's the thing I've kind of seen. I, I was actually on a committee that over the past year and a half that, um, was a KDOT advisory committee related to freight traffic. So it wasn't, it was specifically looking at where freight is moving around the state and how KDOT needs to um, place priorities on certain corridors to, you know, account for that. Um, and quite frankly, Highway 50 and 281 didn't rise to the top. If you look at traffic going east-west from, say, um, Garden City to Wichita, it's Highway 54 that's getting Right, because you're talking priority. about the bigger trucks and things like that. Right. So what I'm saying is, you know, when KDOT's got limited amount of funds, some of these things, you know, we see, we see the need, but looking at the whole state, there's a lot of other places that are making the same argument. So I think it kind of comes down to that democratic thing where we got to make our case. We got to, we got to, you know, maybe you look at a political process, not just a statistical process. I know trucks moving freight is important across the state, but also, uh, crash statistics, and I know KDOT, the, I, I looked for some uh, reports on this, and KDOT submitted a report, I, I can't remember who did it, and it was a, a study on the color of vehicles and how that related to car crashes, seeing other vehicles coming. Oh, yeah, this was like a 28-page report, and it just had a crash statistics from 2008 to 2012, and those numbers were very high for the number of accidents that happened around that intersection. So I, I'm, I'm going to be really curious to find out the, the, the crash numbers and the data that's happened on this intersection since I think they took out the, uh, the islands there in 1995. You know, that was before my time here. I don't remember them. That's what I've read about as well. Um, I think some of the, the feedback has been that the way that we have larger loads now, even some of the wind turbines or some of the recent examples now, they're trying to navigate that corner um, in fact, 
I know that there is a wind farm going into Laredo, Texas, and they're so, they're sourcing some of the parts for that in Newton, Iowa. And this That's corridor what we're seeing is, there. Okay. Uh, is, is a place that they're bringing some of that equipment. So when they follow that path, they are trying to navigate the turn from US 50 westbound, you know, the east side of that intersection. They're, they're making a corner there going south on the 281 highway. And it's tight as it is now. And, and so you look at islands as, as well, that would just really complicate that. Four-way stop so, would probably, I don't know, that'd be the simplest way to do it, but it'll be interesting to see. And, and I know that, as, is this a, I mean, a concern for, a, you know, for, I know for uh, Mary was one, she was going to the golf course and, and that was the crash this summer where mm-hmm. a two-year-old was airlifted to Wichita. So, because I know, what do they call it down there? Hell's Crossing? That's that's, <laughs> that's the locals' name for it. So. Yeah, no doubt. We we all have a lot of memories of those just dramatically bad crashes, and mm-hmm. some of them have been bad, and miraculously people have walked away fairly well. Some of them, or maybe didn't walk away but recovered. You know, the, there's a spectrum there of, of just the the severity of of accidents. But we again, those of us that live here, have that. You know, very top of mind. Um, again, I think it's just trying to navigate this process, you know, the political sausage yeah. <laughs> of, you know, our state has finite resources and people around the other parts of the state have maybe higher traffic counts on their highways, or, you know, they have citizens that are advocating for improvements there too. We're just going to have to talk a little louder, I think. Four stop signs. I think you might be able to raise that in a day yeah if, yeah. if you want if you wanted to is you've, you've worked with KDOT and on these boards before like you said Carolyn how encouraging is it they're not sending one they're not sending two they're not they're sending four people out well, here. they are so I give them credit they are listening I get so I that's going to be seven o'clock next Wednesday and that will be at the uh, library, the official name for the library, the Goodman, the Ida Long Goodman, Ida Long okay well I had one of the three words in there the Ida Long Goodman uh <laughs> library in St. John for that public meeting uh, concerning the intersection at highways uh, 281 and highway 50. Carolyn Dunn with us, Ashley Bevan in with us. We're talking focus on Stafford County today. We'll take a break and have more of today's show coming up for you right after this. OPI wants to help you furnish your business with top quality office solutions. Whether it's desks, chairs, filing cabinets, cubicles, or workstations, you'll find a solution at Office Products Incorporated and all at sale prices. If you need design help, OPI has furniture specialists to measure and draw what will work in your space. If you want your office to be more comfortable and productive, then let Office Products Incorporated be your business source. Great Bend, Larned, Russell. And don't forget to ask about our scratch and dent furniture selection, which can save you even more. This fall, every American has a choice. Your decision could affect the way you live for years to come. That decision, wood or gas. A wood-burning fireplace is messy. Chop the wood, clean the ashes and the smoke. Who needs that? A new gas fireplace from Steeter Contractors is easy to light. It burns clean and heats efficiently. Steeter sells and installs a complete line of gas fireplaces plus pellet and corn stove. So this fall, choose wisely. Choose a new gas fireplace from Steeter Contractors. I'm Terry Steeter, and I approve this message. This is Steve Webster, co-host of Sports Day on 1590 KVGB. Join me along with Cole Rye for the Thursday show. We'll get you ready for week eight of the high school football season by visiting with Central Plains head coach Chris Steiner's second-ranked Oilers travel to third-ranked Solomon to take on the Gorillas Friday night. We'll also preview game six of the ALCS after Toronto stayed alive last night with a 7-1 win over the Royals. And, of course, all the sports news of the day and the sounds of the past 24 hours. Sports Day brought you in part by Smith Supply and the Grape and Co-op Seed Department. Sports Day today at 1230 on KVGB. Join Jason French this Saturday morning for the Suitsman's Greenhouse and Garden Center show. Jason will be taking your questions and offering advice and information on America's favorite pastime, gardening. The Suitsman's Greenhouse and Garden Center show airs at 7.30 every Saturday morning on 1590 KVGB, the talk of the town. Listen in and call Jason with your questions during the Suitsman's Greenhouse and Garden Center show this Saturday morning on 1590 KVGB. Suitsman's Greenhouse, everything's green but us. Welcome back. 
Let's focus on Stafford County today. Don't forget, again, don't forget that meeting coming up on October 28th. That's next Wednesday. Ashley Bevan, who came with us. And I was asking about, because we're talking about that intersection. We'll move on mm-hmm. to some other stuff here in just a minute. But on going from K4 east toward Lindsburg, and that's where the, the highway from Lyons is. Uh, it used to be K14. I think it's K11. I don't know. That's a four-way stop, right? You've yes. gone through that a lot of times, right? Yep, that's the way I went um, from home to McPherson, where I went to college every trip home. So, yeah, you've just got it, It's kind of weird. You just got to pay attention at those places. I, it, I mean, we kind of know about it when we get there because I always get down there and said, "Okay, I'm going to look left. I'm going to look right. Okay, now, now I'm going to look back left again. I'm going to look back right." You know, I think this is some of my own reflection on it. I think sometimes I am a better driver in places that have just heavier traffic. When I find myself in a city, I'm paying better attention. But it's just my own projection of things. But when I'm in these environments where you can drive long spanses without a lot of traffic, sometimes even even if I'm not doing something like talking on a phone or those things that we point to as the distractions a lot of the time, sometimes it's just easy to start daydreaming because... There's just long spanses of highway that you don't have to do much but keep going straight ahead. And I think, I don't know, projecting my own my own experience on that intersection, I think that might be part of it. It's hard to be as aware as you need to be in in that environment. Yeah, because there's because you've got the rumble strips when you come up there. You got big stop signs it's with true. that guy with the big nose looking over the top yeah, of it. You know that yeah. gets your attention. But again, I think a lot of those people do stop. Right. But uh, again. Right. I'm going to find out a lot more. That's pretty cool that the Department of K- uh, KDOT is sending out at least four representatives. So a good discussion coming up next Wednesday, the Ida Long Goodman Library, 7 o'clock in St. John next Wednesday. Bike sharrows are painted in Stafford. They are. Um, at the beginning of this month, the Recreation Commission Director, Jan Chapman, um, sent me a picture on my cell phone. She said, look, we've got sharrows getting painted finally. Um, And this was, I think, a discussion that was started back in the spring. Jan was meeting with um, the city of Stafford to try and get these painted. Um, And it's part of our uh, master walk and bike plan um, with PedNet that was funded through our Healthy Communities Initiative grant um, through the Kansas Health Foundation. And so I ran over to Stafford that morning and I said, hey, I'm going to get the city workers in action painting these things. So I did. I went over there and I followed the route and they have painted it according to our master walk and bike plan. Um, I talked with the workers for a while and they actually made their own stencil, wooden stencil of this bike charo that's probably the size of your desk right here. Really? Yes. And they were just loading it up in the back of their city truck and unloading it. And they had um, white spray paint for streets in a can that they were just going along painting. Mm -hmm. And... um, I mean, for the most part, they've covered about all the ground they needed to for our master walk and bike plan. So it's very exciting to move this. Very doable. This is the kind of stuff that I think um, represents the kind of progress we can make in small towns without a big expenditure. You know, sometimes we see that barrier of we've got small budgets. There's only so much we can do, and yeah, that's reality. But there's a lot of things we can do if we choose to. When we see a bike shower, what are we supposed to do? It awares motorists that bicyclists have the right to share the lane with them. And, I mean, it's a it's a big safety factor with kids and adults, anyone wanting to ride their bike in the street. And, and we've noticed, I mean, sidewalks are just not the place for no. a bike. No matter how big I kind of think the sidewalk is, I don't know. I look at sidewalks as people walking and, you know, moms pushing strollers and so it's it's a big safety factor that we have in place now in the city of Stafford. So yeah, I know they're working on that here too. And and uh, yeah, you're not supposed to ride on because one thing I found out when people ride on sidewalks, they don't think there's a stop sign or anything like that that, <laughs> that they need to go the same direction and things like this. But so you, the laid out bike route is available in Stafford. Yes, and it's um, it's on our website. We actually have a master walk and bike plan for St. John and Stafford both. Um, hopefully, um, in the near future, we'll be working with the city of St. John to get Charos painted along the master walk and bike plan in St. John. 
Um, I've already talked with the city workers in Stafford, and they are willing to let us borrow their stencil. It's just a matter of asking city council, you know, can we get this done? Do you have paint that we can use for this? Because like Carolyn said, it's not a big expense. It's just finding the time to get it done. I just like the the fact that the, the city guys over in Stafford saw you coming. It wasn't, ah, there's, here's one of those ladies that made us go out and make this stencil. They sound like they were behind it. That's cool. Well, they, that's funny that you say that because, you know, I pull up. And here I am taking pictures, and they're like, are you one of those crazy people that are asking us what we're doing? And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just going to take pictures of proof that you guys are getting this done. I appreciate it. So, <laughs> What are you doing there with yeah. that, that thing? Looks like. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate that what they have, exactly. the effort they put yes. into that. They do. Okay, Great. Bike and Build. You got another grant from them? Are they coming back next year to well, work? Well, I don't know. The you must have treated offer, them real nice. I do feel like it's become a, a good um, relationship there, but officially we did get a grant from the riders that came through this summer. Um, kind of their process is that all of the participants that, that are a part of that program nationwide, and they have, I don't remember, eight or nine different routes that go from the east, mostly from the east part of the country to the west part of the country. Um, all of those riders... Uh, engage in fundraising prior to going on the route on their ride and a certain amount of that I think supports the cost that it takes for them to complete the trip but a majority of it goes toward grants that they collectively decide how they want to disseminate so over the course of the summer as they're spending their evenings along the way they they're looking at these grant applications and um, they selected Stafford County Economic Development to receive a portion of those funds and We'll be able to put that to the continuing renovation of the house in Hudson that they also contributed their time. To okay, so summer. they don't have to come back here during the time you're spending this no, money. Oh, no, okay. this is actually separate. A lot of the organizations, well, in fact, similarly, the year before that, when Bike and Build did not stop in Stafford County, they gave us a grant um, to kind of get things going. So a lot, there is no requirement that the grants are dedicated to places that they stop lot of places that they don't stop um they deem deserving of grants so it's not connected and yet i'm um, thankful that we've kind of developed again a, a good relationship and they're certainly welcome to come back in any future year that would be fun they were they brought a lot of energy guys talk about the research you do i mean because these grants are out there but if you don't know about them, I mean, you're probably not going to apply for them right this one's all carolyn <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> you know, you just keep your ears open and sometimes things come your direct your way or you just, you know, know how that you might um, just make an effort to, to acquire things. I don't know. We, we get some, we, we don't get some, you know, we've made applications. That ah, you you're batting 900 right yeah. now. Come on. <laughs> uh, before I do want to talk about the rural opportunity zone. So I'm going to skip ahead here just quickly on school enrollment numbers. Uh, up five in Stafford, about the same in Maxville. St. John was down after a spike enrollment last year. In fact, Maxville moved up to class two A this year for the fall and winter sports season. So, uh, well, but the best thing is everything's staying stable. That's, that's great. All in all, we're pretty level, you know, a little bit up, a little bit down in one school district or over the other year to year, you know, St. John had a pretty big spike last year, pretty big spike down, but over the two or three year period, it's, it's pretty level. So the story behind that is that is an improvement over the period before that because looking at that 2000 to 2010 period, we were very high in terms of population decline. That really relates to this idea of the Rural Opportunity Zone program. We were one of the counties that got in in the first, that first round in 2011 they defined those counties as being eligible for that program as those that had lost at least 10% of their population over that 2000 to 2010 period. And we were there. So we were losing a lot of population. Similarly, I'm on this program, I've talked about being coming eligible for the federal new market tax credit. It's an incentive that is designed to, um, well, bolster investment in areas with various indicators of decline, low income or whatever. Well, the measure that got us a part of that program was being a quote unquote high migration rural county. We had lost so much population during that period of time. We were deemed eligible for this program. So we're at least maintaining now. Um, 
I would like to see better growth, sure, but we're getting there. I think that that the idea is that we're getting there. Um, Talk about what an an employer, if they want to sponsor a new hire, what do they need to do? Well, maybe I should even kind of retouch on what the idea of what the Rural Opportunity Zone program is. Okay, wait a second. Let's go ahead and take a break here because I, I, I looked at... the school enrollment was kind of tied to the other thing. So yeah, tell me I can't skip ahead next time. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk about the Rural Opportunity Zone, what it is, and tell you more about it right after this. Let me tell you some of the reasons people get into trouble with credit cards. A job loss or salary cut, an unexpected expense, a divorce, a business loss, or even helping a family member or friend in need. How do I know? Because I'm Howard Dvorkin, the founder of Consolidated Credit. I understand that credit card problems are not about overspending. It's about emergencies and unexpected situations. For nearly two decades, Consolidated Credit has helped over 5 million people just like you. We can reduce your interest rates and cut your payments up to 50%. There's a lot of ways to get into trouble with debt. There's only one trusted way to get out. Consolidated Credit. When credit card debt is the problem, we're the solution. Call Consolidated Credit now. 1-800-499-4068. 1-800-499-4068. That's 1-800-499-4068. 5701 Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Licensed debt management service provider, Vermont and New York Banking Departments, Maryland. 49 Oregon DM80031. Good morning, G. 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 Morning, G. Morning, G. Morning, G. Morning, G. Good morning, Gene. Start your Saturday morning the right way with Gene Miller on AgriShop. Rural America's radio swap shop. Every Saturday morning, 805, right here on your favorite local radio station. Your home for Panther football is 1590 KVGB. This is Patrick Burnett, the voice of the Panthers, inviting you to join me and football analyst Jason Perry this Friday as the Panthers continue district play at home against the Salada Central Mustangs. The K-Prep Spring Game Show begins at 6 Friday. Panther football brought to you in part by Venture Corporation, Sutherland's, Graben Regional Hospital, Advanced Therapy, Marmy Chrysler, Marmy Ford, and Epoxy Poly. That's Panther football on KVGB. Welcome back. Focus on Stafford County today. Carolyn Dunn, Ashley Bevitt in with us on the program. All right. Rural Opportunity Zone. I kind of jumped across because I want to look at the school numbers that are in. Tell me about this program and how it's helping rural Kansas. Well, this was a program that was started in 2011. One of the first things that Governor Brownback brought um, when he was elected to office. So the idea behind it is that we help um, in bring young professionals to the rural areas that have lost so much population in the the first decade of the century. And um, it provides some assistance in student loan repayment. The way it works is that the state provides, well, I guess I should say over a five-year period, a resident can qualify for up to $15,000 toward their student loan debt. Um, it breaks down to 3000 per year over a five-year period, half of which is paid by the state of Kansas and half by the local county. Um, counties that were made eligible for this program in that legislation in 2011 had to actively opt into the program. So our county commission had to pass a resolution saying, yes, we want to participate and we're willing to dedicate X amount of dollars to it. Um, so the, the state only only matches what is being um, paid for at at the local level. So our county has um, room for $10,500 worth of, um, you know, copay. And that actually comes out of Stafford County Economic Development's budget. The the county commissioners, I think at the time, kind of were wanting to, I don't know, be conservative with their their dollars, um, kind of had mixed feelings about the county paying for individuals' student loan debt. So the way that we worked it out so that we could participate in it and kind of see how it works was that it comes out of the allocation that um, the county already provides to Stafford County Economic Development. We budget, um, like I said, 10500 for that. We are full. We have people on a wait list. Um, and so it's been a tool to help you know, bring some young professionals back to the county. Um, 
I might mention that it continues, though, to be a tool available, even though we do have a wait list. The way that that can um, continue to be a way that we bring people in is that an employer can choose to sponsor their um, their employee. And if that employer will pay that $1,500 copay, the state will, again, kick their, their amount in. And we have one participant in our county that um, kind of, you know, didn't have to be on the wait list, could immediately participate in the program because the employer chose to do that any so you got a, a waiting list right now any mm-hmm. type of is it limited to any type job or no any any job i mean it it the criteria is more on the idea that it, it the person completed a degree it can be an associate's degree a bachelor's degree master's what i think um uh what would you call it a technical degree also can qualify but they had to have completed an accredited program um, in any area. Okay. Rural Opportunity Zone. You can find out more. If you have questions, you can contact Carolyn Dunn at, at Stafford County Eco De- Devo. Uh, let's see. Ashley, you want me to talk about this? You want to. You can. Uh, Either or. That means i got to read. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. St. John Community Blood Drive. And that is taking place tomorrow. Yes. E- 11 to 4 p.m., at the Oddfellows Lodge. Oh, okay. I can <laughs> say the Oddfellows Lodge, 700 East First Street. You can call 1 800 Red Cross or you can visit redcrossblood.org to schedule an appointment. Again, that's going to be tomorrow from 11 to 4 o'clock. Anything else? You have 20 seconds. You know what? We talked about our website today, but I'm not sure I threw it out there exactly where one would go to look at our website. So it's um, www.staffordecodevo.com, staffordecodevo.com. You can sign up for our newsletter. Also, if you're an alumni that would like to have um, ongoing updates, sign up there too. The voice of the Golden Belt, 50.